Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro. So today we're gonna take a look at Angular 6 Material. So a lot of you have been requesting this. I do have two other tutorials for Angular 4 and 5 Material, but it's always nice if you never touched it to have a nice updated new fresh tutorial. There's a little bit, there's a few differences, but nothing major. Um, so what we'll do is start a new Angular 6 project from scratch with the Angular command line interface. And then we will integrate everything that's necessary to get Material working like animations and gesture su support with Hammer JS, and then we'll actually refer to the official material material angular IO documentation and this will help you understand how to read the docs when you want to use your uh, material components based on your apps needs all right so if you haven't yet make sure you subscribe here on YouTube check out coursetra.com and let's get started all right, so to get started here in your command line or console, we first want to make sure that you have the latest version of the Angular command line interface. Um, so to install that, you'll need either the Yarn Package Manager or Node Package Manager. So um, we're just going to use NPM, so the, the Node Package Manager. And um, to install the CLI, of course, want to make sure we um, use NPM, I, and then at Angular forward slash CLI and then we want to save it globally and then hit enter. I already just did this, so my current version of the uh, Angular CLI is 6.0.8. All right, so after you have that, we'll go ahead and use it to start a new project. So ng new, and we'll call this just material hyphen ng. And then we'll also add routing in case you want that. And then also style equals SCSS for SAS. All right, so once that's done, we also want to install the Angular Material Package along with the Angular CDK. So first we have to hop into the new folder. So CD uh, material hyphen uh, ng, that's right, that's what it's called, being slow there. And then we'll go ahead and use npm i and then save Angular Material and also Angular CDK. All right, so now because uh, certain components of Angular Material rely on animation, you're gonna, going to want to install the animation library as well when it comes uh, with Angular. So to do that, we'll simply run npm install and we'll save and then we'll reference Angular animations. Now you're also going to want to include gesture support, which is done through uh, Hammer.js. So we'll go ahead and add that as well. So it's gonna be npm i for install, we'll save it and then Hammer.js. And I just realized I have a typo right there. Okay. All right, so now once it's done, that's pretty much it with all of you know, installing what is pretty much necessary for uh, Angular 6 material. So once you have that ready to go, we're gonna open up our code editor. And I, with that Hammer.js in mind, in order to even use that, we have to go to our app's main entry point, which is main.ts and simply import, let me increase the size here for us a bit, import Hammer.js right here and then save that. Now we also did uh, in, include the Angular animation. So we're gonna go to our app module TS file and real quickly, I'm going to simply copy this off the side, control B to get rid of that sidebar. We're gonna import the browser animations module and then add it to the imports array of our ng module, module decorator. All right, so now uh, in order to use Angular Material, we're going to create a separate file that will add all of our imports and exports depending on our needs and what we're actually using from Angular 6 Material. So you could define all of this stuff right here, but just to keep this app module file a little, a little bit more, you know, uh, less verbose and, and cluttered, then we're just gonna create a separate file. So I'm gonna hit Control B here, and just in this folder here, I'm going to create a file called material.ts for TypeScript, and then we're going to simply go ahead and include just some boilerplate here. And, and by the way, I'm looking at the documentation for this, and I also have a written version. Um, it was gonna be linked here in, in the description. So 
let's say for instance you know you want to use the material button and the material checkbox module um, the, the way this works is you import these at the top and then you add them as imports and exports and then you export a class so right there here this is coming straight from the, the official documentation I'm just going to change this to material module right here and this is not showing up because we need to I uh, real quickly import that as it's imported up here right there all right so we'll be referring back to this file when we you know kind of do a little bit of experimentation based on just adding our own uh, components from material um, angular 6 material so once this we have this file created and saved then all we have to do is just go to app module and we're going to import material module from and then same directory material then we simply have to reference this and then add it as an import all right great so now again when we want to add different components from material we add them up here in this imports and then add them as imports and exports and then we'll be able to use them in our template files all right so uh, we're not done yet though with the setup we still also need to include a theme so including a theme is required and this is pretty standard I remember doing a tutorial all the way, all the way back from angular 4 same thing I uh, so to include a theme we're gonna go to control B and we're gonna go to here our um, our styles.sass and we have to import one of four different pre-built themes and these themes come from from the official documentation uh, where it says using a pre-built theme so you have the, the available themes that you have at your disposal are let me make this a little bit larger are the deep purple amber CSS indigo pink pink blue gray and purple green and it shows you how to import this this is what this is the line that we just added right here and if you want to experiment and see what those actually look like once you actually have some components that are you know are showing up in your project then you could just switch these out to see what these look like in terms of uh, the color scheme and all that stuff there is also uh, some uh, documentation right here that tells you um, how you how you would actually define a custom theme through a SAS file right here so I'm not going to cover that specifically I may do that in a separate tutorial um, but it's not too difficult to understand there's just there's some points uh, that may be a little bit confusing but it's all described here all right so I'm gonna go ahead and close that we're gonna go ahead and save that and we also want to add material icons uh, because you know, material this is based on material and their material icons and if you want to be kind of consistent you're going to work in icons you don't have to use this but you can um, we can go ahead and copy and this is again from the official documentation uh, this line over here so if I go to control B we go to index.html and just under this uh, just before the closing head tag we can just paste this line right here so it's pointing it's a link that's pointing to this Google API's where it's going to import this icon font material icons all right great all right so that is it with the setup so at this point you know it entirely depends on your needs uh, of, of the app that you're building and you, this is the point where you're likely going to want to real quickly open this guy up this is material.angular.io and if you click on components it's going to give you a list of all the components that you have at your disposal to, to, to in, in order to build your application. Um, so there's a lot here, but I just wanted to do a quick overview of um, just a few of them to show you how to read this documentation. And that way, when you go forward, you have more confidence in, in understanding how this documentation is built. And it's pretty robust, um, pretty simple. So let's just say, for instance, I, if we go back to our project here, uh, for instance, we'll notice we have a, a material button module and a checkbox module already added. Um, so if we go here, uh, no, we don't want that one. If we go back to the page we were just at and we go to button right here, you'll see that it's structured, this, this documentation is structured in three different tabs generally. You have an overview, which tells you about what the, you know, the component is, what its purpose is. Um, and it, it also gives you other information down here. And then also 
an API. This is where you it tells you exactly how to import that. And this is where you know this right here is coming from. So import map button from material button. All right. So I also examples. This is very handy. Um, if you click on this little syntax or these brackets right there, you'll see it provides you with all of the HTML uh, necessary for creating exactly what you see right here. All right. So um, it'll give you these in tabs too. So you, you have your HTML is associated with what it was showing your TypeScript. So some, some, some of these examples don't have any custom TypeScript, but some of them do have actual um, code that is associated in this export class area right here, uh, because some of them are a little bit more dynamic in nature. Um, but that's not the case with a simple button for now. Um, and then if there's any CSS, it'll, it'll show it here as well. All right. So um, if we wanted to create a simple button, well, okay, let's, let's just take this button mat hyphen button this is the custom attribute that really uh makes that you know the, the button a material button then we'll just copy that and we'll go to our let's see our app component.html file this is all the standard stuff that shows up when we run ng serve we'll go ahead and just save this we'll leave the router outlet there although we're not going to use it and then we'll go ahead and run ng serve hyphen o to open up the browser for us Come on, come on, let's get going. I have loud children in the house and I was just like, I, I wanna get this done before they screw up the video and I have to restart or restart a portion of it at least. All right, so there we are. Now you know that, and I'm, I'm increasing the size of the browser by the way, the zoom. Um, you know this is 100% working because this button here is a material button. So. If we hit control shift I make sure there's there's no errors in the console there aren't and we're good to go so now at this point you just start to you begin to build your layout based on the needs of your app so um, you know typically at the top of an app you'll have like a toolbar or navigation of some sort so if we go to our um, angular material uh, doc here uh, let's see layout uh, navigation so we have a toolbar there's also a menu, uh, but this is a little bit different. Uh, it's not like your, your, your typical, like a header. It's just a simple uh, menu that can show up uh, on click, for instance. There's a side nav, and then there's a toolbar. So the toolbar is a little bit more in tune with what we want at the top. So up here on this official material IO uh, website, this is technically a toolbar at the top, and this is what they use. So if we go to API, we can first grab this and we'll go back to our project here and we'll go to our material TS file. So we have the mat toolbar module. And so we're going to add that as an import and export and then save. Now we can actually use it in our uh, template file. So going back here, if you go to examples, we'll see we just have some examples here. All right. So Let's say we want this one down here, uh, where there's like kind of like a logo, perhaps could go here, and then just some icons. Um, as you can see, it's pretty similar to what's happening up here, although they have a little bit more going on. But you can extend it easily once you understand the HTML and the syntax. So what will you do? I'm just going to copy everything, and then we'll go ahead. I'm going to get rid of that button. Just paste this in, and we can see we have mat toolbar row. All these just uh, custom elements here um, and you'll understand as you start to, to work with them so I'm just going to delete those top two because those are creating the top two um, navigations uh, that we were seeing over here the, like the custom toolbar and second line we only want the third line so now if we go ahead and save this you would think okay it's going to look like it's going to look uh, like like right here but it's actually not going to Nope. We have an issue, so Control Shift I. All right, so you may be you may copy code, and you're going to run into potential errors. And especially if the screen goes blank, there's an error. Get out the um, the inspector and go to console. So it says uh, Matt icon is not a known element. So for this particular example, um, they included a, um, a material component called a material icons that we don't yet have added. So we have to add that. So we have to go down here to find real quick icon. 
All right, we go to, um, oops, the API area right here. We copy Matt icon and we'll just go back to material TS. All right, same process as before. So we'll, we'll save that. Now it's going to work, but it's not gonna be 100%. I'm like, why is that over there and not over here? Well, uh, there's also CSS that's um, referenced sometimes in this uh, these examples. So if I go back to our toolbar, click on syntax, go to CSS, we see there's just some CSS that makes this possible um, to, to, to right align these. And so now we copy that, we can go to our app component SAS file, save that, and now it's working as we want it to. Very, 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 very simple. Uh, we'll do just one more example um, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, so let's say for instance, we wanna have like a menu over here and because we're using material IO icons, um, we can go to the material icons website and we can search for a menu and this one will work typical hamburger style menu and then come down here with selected icon go ahead and take i uh, this right here this code it's called menu within these these i tags and we'll go back to our app component html file and we can see we already have our, our mat icons right here so um, i could just change this to menu get rid of this one save it we'll go back to our example and there we go awesome stuff so let's make it clickable and we'll change it to a cursor with a css rule set so the class given here is example icon all right so we we'll go to our css example icons already defined up there with some padding so we can just put cursor pointer all right there we go but nothing happens because we haven't added a click event on it. So let's make something else happen. I mean, for instance, uh, something typical is that you would have some type of menu. So you could include the menu um, uh, component from material, from Angular 6 material, um, which would be right over here. Um, yeah, why don't we, might as well just do that. I, I had a different plan. We're going to use the, uh, the what is it, the tool tip down here. Um, but we'll use menu and see if I can wing this uh, just off the cuff here. So first we'll go to our API. We want to import the menu. So we'll go back to material. All right, add this to the end. All right, we'll go back. So how do we use this? I never, I mean, I may have used it in one of the previous tutorials from a year ago, but we'll see. All right. so. Um, examples. So on click, we want to have an item one and item two. So let's check out the source to see how they actually created that. All right. So on the button, in, in our case, it'll be uh, a mat icon. We're going to create this right here. We're going to add this. So mat menu trigger four equals menu. Okay. So might as well at this point, um, well, we'll just copy this part right here. We'll go back to here, so mat icon class. You may want to wrap this in a mat button, um, but we'll, we'll see if we can just get away with uh, adding this uh, attribute here. So um, after that, we're going to put in, let's see if there's any CSS. Nope, no CSS. Uh, TypeScript, nothing there. So this should just work right out of the gate. All right, so then we're gonna have a mat menu. We'll put it right underneath it. All right, so this I think will work here. So let's save it. There we go. All right, so of course, then you would add click events to these individual items right here if they are clicked. All right, very simple stuff. All right, so hopefully you found that useful. Uh, of course, this wasn't very comprehensive, like a course that went over every single component as that's a part of Material IO, but I wanted this to be quicker, uh, just show you how to get up and running with it and also how to read the docs so that, you know, I don't have to hold your hand through every single component uh, in, in the documentation. So hopefully you have some confidence now and you'll be pretty good on your way. Uh, I am planning on doing a more comprehensive uh, kind of uh, app that uses Angular Material in the future. So keep an eye out for that. Make sure you check out Corsetro.com and also subscribe here on YouTube. All right, goodbye.